Hello and welcome to this new episode of Web Domestified. Have you ever heard of SVG? Let me guess, it's another of those weird acronyms. Good guess! It stands for Scalable Vector Graphics and it's the only vector image format for the web. Let me guess again, you're gonna explain what a vector image is and why it is scalable. Am I that predictable? So images exist in two flavors, bitmaps and vectors. Bitmap images simply define what color each pixel of an image should be painted. The most common image format for the web are JPEG, PNG, and GIF. Vector images act differently. They provide a set of instructions about how the image should be rendered and it's up to the rendering software to compute how each pixel should be colored. There are a lot of benefits and limitations to each format, but to make it short, bitmap images are well suited for highly detailed images such as photographs, whereas vector images are well suited for less detailed images that need to be scaled at different sizes like icons or data representations. Already done? Wow, that was a short one. Huh. Well, actually, now we can get into why SVG is so awesome. Indeed, SVG has some characteristics that make it unique for the web. Of course, that vector part is very important, especially these days when you want a single image to fit screens of so many different sizes and resolutions. The trick is that a single bitmap image can be too heavy for low resolution devices or if they are connected to a low bandwidth network. But if they are light enough, they tend to be blurry on large resolution devices. Choosing the right image format for a given use in a multi-devices context is somewhat tricky and it will definitely worth having its own video. But beyond that, it has the following awesome abilities. First, it's a text format written with tags like HTML. Second, it can be styled with CSS like HTML. And third, it can be scripted with JavaScript, like HTML. Yeah. So, adding a touch of SVG to your HTML documents allows to create some awesome graphic effects like this, or this, or even this. I've got the feeling you're hiding something. I'm not, but from what I've said, you might think it's as easy to create SVG by hand as it is HTML. No, it's not. The trick is that HTML is about describing documents, where SVG is about describing pictures. So, if it's quite easy to draw rectangles and circles by hand, if you want to create more complex shapes, it is kind of a challenge. For that reason, if you want to create complex images with SVG, you'll need either some serious mathematical skills or a good piece of vector drawing software. I'm definitely a drawing software person. I don't want to be prescriptive of any software because it's always a personal choice that depends on many factors. But at the time of shooting this video, Inkscape, Illustrator, and Sketch are very likely the most used software to output SVG out of the box. There are also many JavaScript libraries that can be very helpful, such as Snap SVG, Bonsai, or D3JS. Okay, let's recap. SVG is a vector image format for the web, perfect to create images that stay sharp at any scale. It can be authored, styled, and scripted like HTML would be. Creating such images by hand is not impossible, but it's easier to use a drawing software to do so. Yeah, it's simpler than it looks. Interestingly enough, to be mastered, SVG requires both technical and design skills, which is always a winning skill set when you're doing web stuff. Thank you all for watching this video. As SVG is all about graphics, I suggest you to find a good vector drawing software and start having fun with it. In the meantime, if you enjoyed that video, feel free to like it and to share it with your friend. A very good way to bring both your mathematicians and design friends to the same party. To continue the discussion, feel free to comment down below or join me and my colleagues on Twitter. And finally, long live the open web. See you next time.